Um, my name is Simon Oliver and I am a theologian. Well, let's, let's look at the word theology and what it means. Okay, theology is a combination of two words, uh, theos, God, uh, logos, which means word or reason. So theology is literally rational or reasonable speech about God and all things in relation to God. We're commonly told there are two subjects at dinner parties you don't raise, religion and politics. But the fact is that people spend an awful lot of time, one way or another, talking about or thinking about both. They're very common pub to topics, and people often have a view on this. But they will also have a very specific image that comes into their minds when you mention the word God. And it's usually something like a big man in the sky with a white beard who tinkers around with the universe, who tells you what to do, and who, who might or might not mess around with things in the way they are. And most people today, if they are atheists, reject precisely that view of God. And, and I think they're absolutely right to do so. But I would also say that the God in whom people do not believe, who they can't countenance, is not actually the God of the most sophisticated parts of the theological tradition. So. Theology, if, as and when it does speak about God, is always extremely cautious, extremely reticent. It talks about God in terms of metaphor. It talks about God as deep mystery. But it, that's not to say that theologians are uh, obsessed with God or God botherers or anything like that, because we, we do get concerned with an awful lot of, of other topics about, uh, for example, the nature of beauty. Uh, so much of the Christian tradition, the Islamic tradition, Jewish tradition, other religious traditions involves art as a form of human expression of the divine, uh, of human purpose, of how we should organise the world around us, how we should relate to each other, the natural world, and so on and so forth. So all these are fundamental questions and have been for, for, for thousands of years. And theologians look at the depth of that tradition, the riches of it, a tradition that's provoked Durham Cathedral, Chartres Cathedral that's provoked, Mozart's Requiem that's provoked, the art of Caravaggio, Michelangelo that's provoked some of the greatest literature of the world. And it's a vision that's inspired some of our greatest political leaders. It inspired Martin Luther King, it inspired Desmond Tutu in South Africa. Uh, it's inspired uh, countless others who created systems of, of equality and justice that we now treasure so much. Universities, of course, emerged from religious communities. They're part of a religiously provoked curiosity. They emerged from uh, monasteries and then they developed into schools in the medieval period and the earliest uh, universities at Oxford, Bologna and Paris, the earliest medieval universities in the West, uh, were uh, religious communities that asks, asked all kinds of questions. So we, we need to remember that. But what, what universities did then what they did even in the Greek Academy back in the fourth century with Plato. What they do today is they try and make discoveries, but they don't uncover pure facts. This is the key thing, that even the hard sciences don't just uncover information. They uncover information that then needs to be interpreted. That's the key thing. What does it mean? We get all the scientific data, we get discoveries in the humanities, we get discoveries in the social sciences about human society, but what does it actually mean? And I'll give you an example that you might want to edit out later, but we'll, I'll give it you anyway because it's, it's a little bit curious. Let's take uh, a fairly, fairly recent scientific discovery in the field of genetics. We're told by geneticists that human beings share about 95% of their genes with primates. Well, that's a rather interesting piece of information. And given the, the visual similarity between human beings and primates, this leads to some speculation. And it's, it's speculation that in some sense scientists provoke because they tell us that genes are so fundamental to human nature. They say that we are our genes. 
So the immediate question is, well, does that mean that I'm 95% primate? Does that mean that I'm 95% ape? That would be an interpretation of the information. But then I'm told that we also share about 60% of our genes with bananas. So, following the same course of interpretation, does that mean I'm 60% banana? I hope not. I love bananas, but I don't think it makes any sense to say I'm 60% banana. That's a, that's a frivolous example, but it's an example that's intended to show that we need to be careful about how we interpret, it, interpret what we discover. And the interpretation is absolutely key. What does it mean? What's its significance? All these disciplines that compose the University of Nottingham today are all asking these questions, what does it mean? What's its significance? And in the end, we're, as we ask all these questions again and again and again and again and again, there's going to be one fundamental big question that imposes itself upon us and has done through human history. Does the whole add up to anything? Does the whole thing mean anything? Does it point beyond itself? Does creation point beyond itself? And that is the beginning, that's the theological question. Does the whole add up to anything? Okay, well, to start with, um, we probably teach uh, in the region of two to three hundred people in this department every year. So that's one answer. And those two, two to three hundred people in turn go out with a certain education and understanding uh, about all kinds of, of, of issues, questions, uh, a very deep tradition, and they pass that on to others. Many of them become teachers themselves, or they, they go into media work or the civil service with a particular expertise and understanding. Uh, about the theological traditions that we, that we teach. It's also simply because religion is such a powerful force for good and for evil in, in the world today. It also has to be said that fostering an understanding of religion is, to my mind, absolutely crucially important. And if I can explain why. About a third of the world's population is Christian. Uh, about half of the world's population belongs to the three largest, what we call Abrahamic faiths. So those are the three religions that trace their roots back to Abraham. That's Christianity, Judaism and Islam. The world's largest single provider of education and health care is the Roman Catholic Church. Countless political leaders across the world regard their religious faith as a prime motivating factor um, for good or for ill. Education as a tradition and medicine as a tradition both emerge from a theological, uh, a Christian background. The hospital has its origins in the hospitality that was offered to the sick and the dying by religious communities. So all these things add up to the fact that uh, whether you like it or not, religion is a very, very powerful force and we need to understand it. And when we get our theology wrong, then people suffer and they die. When we get our theology right, it can bring out the very best in humanity. So like so many other very powerful uh, cultural forces, uh, traditions, theology can bring out and, and religion can bring out the very best and the very worst in us and we need to understand it to make sure that it brings out the very best.